I'm going to just start with sharing with, um, my conception of what is the relationship between gender identity, gender dysphoria, transgender, and transition, because we hear these words all the time. And my guess is that your kids have a certain um, kind of schema around what these words mean, and I probably have a different version of that. So here's the best way that I can explain it. The word trans is just a description for a type of coping mechanism. So if somebody has gender dysphoria, that's what you can get a DSM diagnosis for. That means you have distress around your biological sex. And being trans is just the description of a person who chooses to deal with their gender dysphoria by identifying as the opposite sex and transitioning. That's all it means. There is no, in my opinion, there's no such thing as true trans or not true trans or I can't tell if I'm trans or not. The real question is, if I'm experiencing some distress around my sex, how am I coping with it? For some people, identifying as the opposite sex and socially and medically transitioning seems to alleviate the distress that they had about their sex. One of the problems right now is that many young people are lumping together all of the human suffering that they're experiencing because of a myriad of issues and they think that that's gender dysphoria and so they expect once i transition all of these things are going to feel a lot better so my view is that because there's no blood test for trans, there's no genetic test, there's no brain scan. I mean, there's a lot of misused information out there, but there is no way to look at somebody's biology and tell if they're trans or not. So this is really a coping mechanism for dealing with dysphoria. What's also come to become really clear to me, which I didn't quite understand when I first started doing this work, is that there are culturally transmitted, socially contagious types of mental health conditions. And the reason that's true is because most mental health conditions, most things that you find in the DSM are not biologically based. They are mental health issues. And when a mental health issue is very nebulous, we can mold our suffering to fit in with whatever labels are available to us. So a really great book, I actually didn't put this in the resource list, but a really great book to check out is Ethan Waters, Crazy Like Us. And he talks about how American conceptions of mental health issues can spread and change as they end up in different parts of the world in different cultures and particularly the way eating disorders have spread in different parts of the world seem remarkably similar to the way gender dysphoria is spreading and i believe this is absolutely being backed up by dr Littman's research and just anecdotally we see thousands and thousands of young girls who are particularly susceptible and i believe boys are too which i'll talk about later to you know, I'm, I'm feeling overwhelmed by emotions that I don't know how to handle and that are scary and painful. And I would like to have a concrete explanation for that. So, of course, what's very natural in teenagehood specifically is you're going to look around the world around you and try to figure out what's wrong with me? Why am I like this? And it's very easy for kids to develop really crippling gender dysphoria. So, um, it's, it's really hard because a lot of these kids don't start off gender dysphoric. Most of the kids I work with, they express that it was just this vague feeling that something is weird about me, which that's just being human, right? We all feel that way when we're kids. But then as they get obsessed with the idea of trans, their suffering becomes more and more and more specific. And it ends up really looking like acute gender dysphoria as though it just came from their own heart and soul. So that's how I think the pathway from distress to gender dysphoria kind of goes.